Hello friends and welcome to the Talking Universe. Today we introduce the Silmarillion, a book about the creation and the first age of Middle-earth. The Silmarillion is a posthumous work by J.R.R. Tolkien published by his son Christopher, four years after his father's death. At the beginning of the book we find two short stories, the Ainulindale about the creation of the world through the music of the Ainur, and the Valaquenta, or the story of the Valar. In this video we will see the Ainulindale, leaving the Valaquenta for the future video. I want to say that in some sentences or paragraphs I will read directly from Tolkien's book. So, without further ado, let's get started. In the beginning there was Eru, the One, also called Ilúvatar, and Ilúvatar emanated from himself the Holy Ones, who were the spirits we know as the Ainur, and Ilúvatar proposed musical themes and the Ainur sang according to their nature, since, at first, each one of them only knew that part of Ilúvatar's thought from where they had come. But listening to their companions, the Ainur, little by little, got to know the other parts. Then Ilúvatar summoned all the Ainur and proposed a deeper and more powerful theme, so that they could sing it if it pleased them, and then a second theme and a third one. And with these three themes, the Ainur made a great music as they had never done before and, although they didn't know it, with the music they were prefiguring the creation of Ea, the universe, that which is, the creation of Arda, the earth, and the arrival of the children of Ilúvatar, the firstborn and the followers, that is, elves and men. Now, while they were singing, the most powerful of the Ainur, called Melkor, began to introduce themes of his own thought that did not agree with the theme of Ilúvatar, and a disharmony was formed, so that other Ainur who were close were perplexed, and some, confused, shaped their songs to feed Melkor's or stop singing. And there seemed to be a battle between the two themes, that of Ilúvatar, deep and harmonious, and that of Melkor, strident and dissonant. Now, when the songs were completed, Ilúvatar rebuked Melkor by telling him that all the songs, deep down, came from him, from Ilúvatar, and that whoever wanted to alter his music would prove to be nothing more than an instrument of Ilúvatar to create even more wonderful things that he had not imagined. Then Melkor was filled with shame, and inside him a secret grudge was born. And if Ilúvatar's music foreshadowed the creation of the world and living beings, Melkor's music foreshadowed evil and wars, just as it would happen much later. And as Tolkien says that those Ainur who participated the most in the music of Ilúvatar would be the ones that later would participate the most in the creation and ordering of Ea and Arda, we can assume that those Ainur who changed their songs, confused by Melkor's music, would be the ones who, later on, would be corrupted by him, as would be the case with the Balrogs or his most wicked servant, Sauron, the Dark Lord, the Lord of the Rings. As it happens, Melkor had had different thoughts from those of the other Ainur, and had gone to empty places in search of the imperishable flame, but he did not find it, because the flame is with Ilúvatar. And this Melkor is the one whom the elves would later call Morgoth. As for the Ainur, Ilúvatar showed them the result of their music, and they saw, in a vision, the creation of a world unknown to them, and in it the children of Ilúvatar, elves and men, and they felt love towards them. But of all that the Ainur saw, 
the colors, the wind, the mountains, the metals, and many more things, it was the water that they most praised. And the elder, the high elves, say that the echo of the music of the Ainu is found in water more than in any other substance on earth. So many wanted to descend to the world in order to help Iluvatar in his creation, and Iluvatar gave them freedom to do so, but he imposed as a condition that they would remain as powers until the end of the world. That is why the main ones of the Ainur who descended are called the Valar, the powers of the world. On the other hand, there were others of the Ainur who preferred to stay in the abode of Iluvatar beyond the confines of time, and they did so, since Iluvatar let them choose freely. But Melkor also wanted to descend, pretending that he wished to collaborate in the creation of Iluvatar, but in reality what he wanted was to rule over Arda and make the children of Iluvatar his subjects and vassals, and be called Lord. So it came to pass that the Valar went down to Ea, but they were surprised as they didn't see what they had seen in Iluvatar's vision for the vision was in the timeless space where Iluvatar dwells, but now they entered the circles of time and saw that much of what they had seen was still to be done. As Tolkien says in one of his letters, the Valar are sub-creators, that is why they labored and ordered Ea and later Arda, the earth, but Melkor, who wanted to be the master of the world, always fought the Balar, and if the Balar built the land by raising mountains, Melkor knocked them down, and if they made seas, Melkor spilled them, if they dug a valley, Melkor raised it up. And so the first war of the Valar against Melkor began, and not much of this war is known, not even by the Eldar, because it happened before they appeared in Arda. Now, the Valar who worked most in the formation of Arda were Ulmo, the lord of the waters, Aule, the blacksmith and builder, and Manwe, the greatest and noblest of the Valar, the lord of the air, of the winds, of the eagles and the birds. And all the Valar took bodies like those of the children of Iluvatar, to be able to communicate with them and not because they needed them. And some took the form of a man, and others of a woman, not because the Ainur were male or female, but because of the features of each one, and according to the work they were going to fulfill. And the big difference between the Valar and Melkor was that the Valar were moved by the love they felt for the children of Iluvatar and for the entire creation of Eru, while Melkor only loved himself and wanted to subjugate everyone and become the master of the world. And that is why, whenever the Valar did a work, Melkor undid it or corrupted it. Anyway, although due to the destruction and wars of Melkor, things could not be done as the Valar wished or had planned, Arda, the earth, the dwelling for the children of Iluvatar was gradually formed, until the habitation of elves and men was ready for their arrival. And here finishes the summary of the Ainulindale. Well friends, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos of Arda and Middle Earth. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Namarie!